I believe that Jacksonville is being a leader here, and I think that is something we're proud to be a part of, and I know the Jaguars feel the same way. Tonight on Real School, Roger Goodell, the National Football League's chief executive in Jacksonville, Florida, giving praise to a new program benefiting Duval County Public Schools student athletes. Whether you're dribbling, rushing, passing, or going to bat, district leaders are committed to keeping you safe. It's all in a new sports program scoring big in our high schools. Real School reporter Alex Sobel is here with the stats. Madeline, it's estimated that every 25 seconds, a young athlete is admitted to the ER for sports-related injuries. That's where programs like Project 17 come in, keeping students off the bench so they can stay active on the field. This is extremely exciting um, as superintendent, um, and I think it's exciting for the entire city. You could say the excitement was contagious here at Everbank Field. Between the cameras, the crowd, and the guest of honor, National Football League Commissioner Roger Goodell. Because our kids uh, want to be active, they need to be active, and they need to, to have the type of medical support to understand how to prevent injuries, how to deal with injuries when they have those injuries. Goodell is talking about Project 17 the program at the center of this special event. It aims to place certified athletic trainers in each of the district's 17 high schools with sports by 2020. I can tell you the trainers that we have brought in to the first five schools, which are those schools that needed it the most, have made a tremendous difference. Project 17 kicked off the school year at Andrew Jackson, Baldwin Middle Senior, Englewood, Ribault, and Reigns. Leaders say certified athletic trainers are specially trained to evaluate and treat injuries, create rehab programs for students, and prevent injuries by teaching athletes how to play smarter and safer. We dreamed that we would have all these certified athletic trainers who would work closely with physicians and medical staff members to make a difference. Project 17 wouldn't be possible without public-private partnerships. The Jacksonville Sports Medicine Program is at the center working closely with schools and doctors. Other players in this partnership include Jacksonville University, the Jaguars Foundation, and the city of Jacksonville. I use in my business that I had before this and now as mayor of this city, and how I lead and how I make decisions, the lessons that I learned on those sports fields and in those weight rooms. You're making kids' life safer, and the trainers, you're giving them really a good career. So you are helping develop lives. And of course, we can't forget the NFL. The league has made significant contributions to Project 17. Mr. Goodell, please join us up on stage to receive your award. In fact, the Jacksonville Sports Medicine Program presented the NFL with a special award as a way of saying thanks for their continued commitment to student athletes. You're finding a way to make sure that we give the proper care to our young athletes and to train young trainers so that they can help in the prevention of injuries but also in the treatment. And I, I think that this model is something that can work in other markets. And guess what guys? Project 17 is already expanding. Soon both Terry Parker and Westside High Schools will have certified athletic trainers on staff. To learn more about this program visit the website on your screen. For Real School, I'm Alex Sobel. Now back to you. It's nothing but net for the Rebalt High School Lady Trojans basketball team. They've added a very impressive title to a long list of accomplishments, national champions. You may remember the team winning the Class 5A state championship game in Orlando earlier this year. Well, two and a half weeks later, the team was invited to participate in the Dick's Sporting Goods Nationals in New York City. An opportunity offered to just a handful of schools. Real school cameras were rolling when the school hosted this special send-off as the team prepared to head to the Big Apple. Organizers pulled out all of the stops with lots of fun, dancing, and entertainment. And several notable alumni and local lawmakers also came out to help wish the girls their best as they represented Duval. Once the team hit the court, they did not disappoint, beating teams from Arizona and Maryland to clinch the top spot. Real School reporter Desiree Miller joins us now with a special report on our hometown heroes. Desiree? Madeline, can you believe these girls played in Madison Square Garden and beat the top ranked team in the country? 
The big game may be over, but it's clear the Lady Trojans continue to hit all the right shots. Thanks, the second and third effort. They went toe to toe with some of the best hoopsters in high school on national TV. I didn't try to think about where we was at, actually, because I knew if I would have thought about, oh, the Knicks play here, I would have been probably nervous, but I just thought about it as another game. But it was really big to play there. And Rebalt is taking home the title. And in the end, the Rebalt High School Trojans emerged victorious, 75 to 49. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the 2016 Dick's Sporting Goods High School Nationals Champions, straight from Duval County Public Schools. But make no mistake, Coach Sheila Seymour Pinnock says the road to the top was not an easy one. For her, it meant making a decision to return to coaching after a brief hiatus. For students, it meant working harder than ever. And I just felt like if I didn't come back and be on the battlefield with my players every single day, that I would not be worthy of any success. This year she was really tough on us and that's how we got to Nationals from being tough and pushing us past our limits. With trophy and title in hand, Rebalt High School welcomed their girls home with open arms. <laughs> they hosted the school-wide celebration. Each player was recognized before the crowd with trophies. The Leon Washington Foundation also presented the team with a $1,000 check toward the purchase of championship rings. How exciting! Coach Seymour Pinnock says the outpouring of support has been unbelievable. It's an amazing experience. I've never really felt this magnitude of love and support. It's almost like it's overwhelming because it's coming from everywhere. From the win at Madison Square Garden to the well wishes of the community. This is an experience the Lady Trojans say they will never forget or take for granted. Because Madison Square Garden is somewhere where a lot of high school and college players will never get to play at. And to be in high school, to play there, and to win a national championship there, it was just an amazing feeling. Everyone has been very warm, supportive, encouraging, appreciative. And it's a very good feeling to be in that position. I'm just trying to tell the young ladies to enjoy this experience. But it's most important that we remain humble and show appreciation. The Reebok High School basketball program is no stranger to success. They've won 11 state championships. And did you know they were the only public high school acts to play at the tournament? For Real School, I'm Desiree Miller. Back to you. Thanks, Desiree. Celebrating the Lady Trojans' big win went beyond the walls of Reebok High School and onto the streets of Jacksonville. You're looking at video from the Parade of Champions, an event put on by the City of Jacksonville and the Jacks Chamber. The celebration kicked off with a parade beginning at the Jacksonville Landing. Dozens lined the streets to show their support, and boy, did they have fun. From dancing to cheering, and you can see the team rode through in these fancy Corvettes. Wow! The procession ended at Hemming Plaza, where city leaders hosted a celebration. Team members and coaches were honored before an energetic crowd, and it was all broadcast live on the radio. Everyone from the superintendent to the mayor publicly honored the Lady Trojans. I am in awe of their intellect, of their talent, and of their skills that they brought to the um, ESPN and became the national champions. It's about public schools. It's about defying expectations. It's about making believers in anyone that doubted what certain students and children could do. Now, therefore, I, Lenny Curry, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida, do hereby proclaim April 12, 2016, as the Lady Trojans Day. This celebration eventually wrapped up with the team and coaches standing before the city council and mayor. They were all recognized during the regularly scheduled city council meeting. From all of us at Real School, we wish the Rebalt High School girls basketball team a big congratulations. The winning streak continues for two DCPS students, whose award-winning work was also recognized in City Hall. A big congratulations goes out to Paxson High School's Camilla Sanchez and Arlington Middle School's Aluria Sheffield. They are the winners of the 2016 Black History Contest and both were honored by the mayor's office. The district's world languages, social studies, and English for speakers of other languages departments hosted the contest, which was open to middle and high school students. Sanchez wrote about Eartha White, the Jacksonville woman who helped establish the Clara White mission downtown. And Sheffield wrote about Clarissa Glanton, a local photographer, 
Both Glanton and Claire White CEO Jacoby Pittman were present as the students were recognized for their work. When it comes to testing, students at one Duval Elementary School have these four words of advice. Get in the game. Real School anchor George Boston is here with the game plan. Days before students at Holiday Hill were set to take the Florida State assessments, school leaders had an idea. Why not put a little pep in the students' steps with a school-wide celebration? That celebration began with a human tunnel. Grade by grade, Holiday Hill students made a grand entrance onto the school's basketball court for the big pep rally, but not before getting high-fived by their peers, their teachers, and by Jacksonville Suns mascot, Southpaw. Once they were seated, they were greeted with a little fancy footwork from their principal, Tammy Haberman. Wow, look at her go. And with the crowd's energy up, the pep rally began with the pledge, the national anthem, and some inspiring words from Principal Haberman. Even when we're not successful, we're still pushing forward to reach that next goal. <laughs> because we get our head in the game. In keeping with the sports theme, the school invited a special guest speaker. Who here likes to play sports and be active? Anybody? That's Jonathan Murphy, a minor league baseball player from Jacksonville, Florida. Grab a basketball, grab a football, go play tag, whatever it is. I want you guys to be active. And guess what? When you come back, you guys are going to kill this test, all right? And just when you thought this pep rally couldn't get any better, along came the surprise flash mob, starring the teachers of Holiday Hill. And did we mention Southside Middle School's Band of Gold? They made quite the entrance. Serving as the perfect ending to a celebration all about educational excellence. Holiday Hill is one of many schools that hosted pep rallies and other fun activities to encourage students ahead of tests. We're confident that all of our students put forth their very best efforts. For Real School, I'm George Boston. Back to you. Thanks, George. Next on Real School, it's an announcement to the tune of $20,000. After the break, we're taking you to a surprise ceremony at Joseph Stilwell Military Leadership Academy. We'll explain why this middle school is getting a big bonus and how leaders are investing it into the classroom. Plus, students at Landon Middle are navigating the waters in this special assembly. Find out which small screen star stopped by the school for a one-of-a-kind lesson in shark tracking. Don't change the channel. Real School will be right back. The Samuel Wolfson School for Advanced International Studies and Leadership opens to incoming ninth graders this fall. Also available, the International Baccalaureate Program and Honors Coursework. Join the pack and enroll in this new dedicated magnet. Preparing our students for college, career, and life every day. For more information, visit DuvalSchools.org. A. Philip Randolph Academies of Technology is combining high school academics with career-ready skills. This fall, new trade programs in high-growth industries will be available for students, including welding, electrical, plumbing, carpentry, HVAC, and more, preparing our students for college, career, and life every day. For more information, visit DuvalSchools.org. On behalf of Verizon, we want to donate a check for $20,000. What an exciting announcement at Joseph Stilwell Military Academy of Leadership. This donation, by the way, was a total surprise to all of the students here in the school's media center. The Verizon Foundation presented the school with an impressive $20,000 check. And it's all in the name of STEM. That is, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. The funds will go towards the school's robotics program. Leaders say the donation will, quote, enhance the learning atmosphere and provide expanded opportunities for cadets in exploring careers in STEM-related fields. Students at La Villa School of the Arts have struck the right note with a groundbreaking new project, a 500-page opera completely conceived, written, and performed by the students. Don't believe us? 
Real School reporter Charlotte Rogers is here with the proof. From the storyline to the set, and from the music to the moves, these students spent 16 months creating something that's never been done by middle school students anywhere in the country. Uh, what? If this sounds like something you've never heard before, you're right. This is original music and original lyrics, all for an original opera. I didn't expect to be picked to write, because I'd never write or wrote anything before. When I found out that I'm going to be part of something that's going to be completely new, that nobody else has ever done before, just, it's hard, it's hard to explain it. Welcome to the dress rehearsal for Jared, a tale of freedom, control, and choice. It's a labor of love that began last school year. Vocal music director Sean Pendry says the idea came after seeing his students take an interest in opera. And we posed it to them at the beginning of the year. As, Do you think this is something that you could actually write? And they said yes. And so the story began. Students worked throughout the school year and into the summer. Some wrote music and others wrote songs. Watching them create meaning out of nothingness was extraordinary because they were really looking at what's the story we want to tell. And we talk about things like analytical thinking and problem solving and evaluation and analysis and synthesis. Those were all embedded in this process to the nth degree. Pendry says, aside from his guidance, students did the work all by themselves. Well, the main goal was to make it all fit together for the production, so we all had to listen to each other's so that we can make the beginning fit and the end fit, so it transitions perfectly. He told us as middle schoolers that people probably wouldn't take us as seriously, which definitely made us like take up the challenge more. Students also raised funds to cover an estimated $10,000 in production costs. Both students and Pendry described the opera as a modern piece about actions and consequences. It's more contemporary with modern music in it, so I hope that they see music as adaptable. Their hope is that the audience not only enjoys their work, but also appreciates the message. I hope they see love and I hope they see a creation, you know, I mean, this is kind of La Villa's baby, but I, I hope they see, you know, art and passion. Pendry says eight students wrote the libretto, which is an opera term for the text or storyline. Eleven other students composed the music. That doesn't count the many other students who helped with the set, dancing, and more. For Real School, I'm Charlotte Rogers. Back to you. Land and middle school students are going under the sea thanks to a unique presentation. Seventh graders were recently treated to a special assembly with TV personality and O-Search founder Chris Fisher. O-Search is known for leading underwater expeditions, but they are perhaps best known for studying sharks. In the past, Landon students have participated in Skype sessions with Fisher, but since he was in town conducting a shark tagging expedition, he opted for an in-person visit. Fisher spoke to students about why sharks are important to the health of the ocean, and ultimately to the global economy. By the way, O-Search ended up tagging four tiger sharks while in Jacksonville. How cool is that? Petting horses, playing with goats, and watching chickens. It was all in a day's work for students at one Duval County Elementary School. Real School reporter Molly Kirkwood explains. Talk about a hands-on learning experience. Students went from the classroom to the great outdoors and had an absolute blast. The next activity... Welcome to the Stay in Country Ranch. You can say it became a classroom for a day for this group of Sheffield Elementary School students. And what better way to learn than to do a little horsing around? Students had a blast walking through the barn and seeing several horses up close. Some even had a chance to brush their coats. You feel the fur, feel the fur. Besides being exposed to a lot of horses, whoa there, buddy! Students saw plenty of other fun farm animals, including rabbits, chickens, and pigs. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a pig this close. You think he's saying hello? I guess these animals know how to have fun, since they're all over this playground equipment. Hey guys! And it seemed like these students had a lot of fun playing with the goats. Looks like the feeling was mutual. See? They're making friends. Good cookie. 
And what's a day at the ranch without a good old fashioned trail ride? Talk about a big haul. Students, teachers, and chaperones loaded up and got a tour of the property. Now that looks like a lot of fun. And you know, we are talking about elementary students. So it only makes sense the group had a chance to sit down and draw. With a basket of markers and sheets of colored paper, they let the creativity flow. Look at all of that pretty artwork. So between the animals, the ride, and the drawing, I'd say this was all in all a great day. And I have a feeling these students will be talking about this trip for a long time. Three. That's how students at Sheffield Elementary are staying country. Sheffield Elementary is no stranger to animals or agriculture. Students have the opportunity to raise animals and grow crops all year round. For Real School, I'm Molly Kirkwood. Back to you. It's a first of its kind public school opening this fall. Coming up on Real School, we're sitting down one-on-one -on -one with the Executive Director of Exceptional Education and Student Services. Learn why the district is converting Oak Hill Elementary to Oak Hill Academy and what that means for students with autism. Don't change the channel. Real School will be right back after the break. serving our highest needs students with autism. Oak Hill Academy opens this fall as a first of its kind public school. Apply now for innovative research-based instruction in a unique learning environment for your child. Committed to high quality education and enrichment for students with autism every day. To learn more, visit duvalschools.org. In a matter of months, Duval County Public Schools will be home to a school serving students with autism, something that's never been done in the district. Now, we go to Real School anchor, Joel Oliver. Madeline, I'm here with Gail Roberts, Executive Director of Exceptional Education and Student Services. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for the invitation. We know this new school will be located at Oak Hill Elementary. Why did district leaders decide to go with that location? Well, Oak Hill Elementary is currently underutilized and it also has a history of being a low performance school. So the district decided to consolidate Oak Hill with some of the neighborhood schools in order to be able to um, design a very special school for students with autism and related disabilities. Why create a school just for students with autism and will it be open to any student with autism? Well, we wanted to provide a new option for parents who have children that have autism or related disabilities. And it'll be an additional option to the array of or continuum of services we currently have. Students with autism often have, um, it's a spectrum disorder. So they have, sometimes the students have very mild disabilities or moderate disabilities or intense disabilities. We created a stakeholder group in last school year to really look at our programs for students with autism, to, to help us uh, um, figure out what we're doing well and what we need to improve on. So they did some research for us, they reviewed our programs, and they said we were doing a really good job with our mild and moderate population, but they really thought we could um, improve or intensify our services for our most significant students. So Oak Hill Elementary will be designed for those students with the most intense needs. And will it be open to any student with autism? Well, the short answer is it wouldn't benefit every student with autism. For our students with autism that are currently in general education classrooms or, or progressing appropriately um, with their typical peers, Oak Hill would not be the school of choice for them. Um, students will have an opportunity to be placed at Oak Hill through the IEP team and the parents are part of that IEP team and they will look, use a placement consideration guide rubric to make a decision to see if the student is really in need of those intensive service and would benefit from that environment. Now what will teaching look like in this school? It will be very intense and individualized for the needs of the students. The st teachers will focus on the, on the Florida State standards typically for access points which is our modified standards. They will use highly engaging curriculum and technology, and they will work collaboratively with certified behavior analysts and speech pathologists and occupational therapists to use research-based 
strategies that are proven to be effective with students with disabilities. Is this isolating students with autism? The students that are, would be attending Oak Hill are the students that ne don't quite have those prerequisite skills to benefit from those social situations with typical peers. We are going to provide opportunities through partnerships with the um, neighborhood, the neighboring schools to be able to provide inclusive opportunities and also community-based instruction opportunities. Thanks, Joel. That's it for this episode of Real School. We'll be back next month when we premiere with a new episode on Sunday, June 5th at 6 p.m. on The CW. Till then, thanks for watching and have a great day. Talk about a, oh, talk about a, I'm sorry, I forgot. In keeping with the sports theme, which is an opera term for the text or storyline. Oh. oh no, I messed it up. Why create a school just for students with autism and will it, op and will it, will it be open? Thanks Joel. That's it for this episode of Real School. We'll be back next month when we prepare. Uh, prepare. No. <laughs> For real school, I'm Desiree Miller. Back to you. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> you may remember the team winning the Class 5A state championship uh, game. We have all had to know. Yeah, but you look creepier than I do doing it. Sorry.